hey, hey, if you got one of those friends that um, still puts the www before a web address when trying to pull something up on the internet, um, then this might be the right video for your friend. I've got one who's trying to access a um, peripheral device that was attached to a firewall or a modem and had received a static IP address. And now someone came in behind him and took out um, that modem or firewall and replaced it and didn't bother to release the IP address that was on the peripheral. So this video is to help him take his laptop to that device, connect to it, and um, get it get that IP address released and freed up so it can be used again. So let's jump into how we're going to do that. So just down from search, um, we're going to go ahead. Oops, I'm searching in the wrong spot. Let's jump back in here. And we're going to go ahead and get into network. If we just type um, NET or VIEW to get to view network connections, that's what we're looking for. Um, so we're here, we're here on the, the laptop that we're going to use to connect, and you could do it from a desktop. It does not matter. Um, we're going to disable that Wi-Fi so that we get the right connection. And then we're going to come in here to the Ethernet connection, and we're going to right-click and come to Properties. Once we're here in the Properties, uh, most of the ones that um, my buddy's going to be dealing with are going to be um, fall within the TCP IP Protocol 4. And so you can just go straight into there. Just know that there is protocol six down here. Um, you may want to try should you have some issues because um, it's the way it's checked. It's going to try to connect with both. And so if it connects with four, you're good to go. If it doesn't, you might want to go back and, and six. But nine times out of 10, you're going to be fine right here. And we're going to click properties. And we're going to move this from obtain IP address to use the following IP address. Now we have to know what the IP address of our peripheral was when it got disconnected and say we knew that that was it. That was the IP address that we used to connect to it remotely. We're going to go ahead and throw that in there. And then we're going to name our computer something different like 1.2. So that makes us unique. It'll go ahead and fill in the subnet mask by itself. Leave that alone and leave DNS servers empty. Uh, in case you know them. So if you do in the future set this up and you have those preferred and alternative DNS, um, it's an okay idea to record those. Um, in most cases, we're going to be able to um, make the connection that we need to make without changing that. But just know if that's all the information you got, that's what we got to go with. We're going to click OK and we're going to click Close and then we're going to go straight into um, plugging in our machine straight into the back of the peripheral. And once we've done that, we simply have to pop over here to a browser. And we're going to type in that gateway, that number that we put in there um, that represented what we used to um, use to get into that peripheral and click enter. That should bring up um, the loading screen for that peripheral. It may have its own um, admin login that you'll have to know to get into its screen. Once you're there and into the screen, you'll find somewhere in its network settings where you can, just like we did, switch from obtain to use. It'll probably say something like dynamic and static. And if you move that to dynamic and then reboot your system and plug it into your new firewall or modem, it will go ahead and grab an IP address with all the protocols of your current system and then jump back into your browser, jump back into um, whatever that new um, address is that it was uh, that has been applied to there and then you can go in and switch that from um, dynamic to static so it will hold the um, address that you have sometimes it'll clear it out so you know take your phone take a quick uh, snapshot of what was assigned all of the um, the uh, the everything that we saw before here so let me show you one last time um, since I'm not explaining it perfectly into four and properties. Once you see all this filled in, go ahead and take the IP subnet default and the DNS servers. If it's given that information to you in that screen, take a picture of it before you switch over to static sometime from, from um, dynamic to static. Sometimes when you click static, it'll clear everything out and ask you to put something in. So you just want to duplicate what you just entered. As long as nobody jumped on your network and grabbed that IP address from you, you should probably be good to go. Don't forget, once you're done, um, changing that over, you're going to want to go into back into your computer, 
back to this same process through the properties and you're going to want to switch this back to obtain. Now, if your computer can connect to the same network um, that your peripheral is while you're there, then you're just good to go to drop everything back into obtain and close and enable your Wi-Fi. And as long as the Wi-Fi is on the same network as the, um, the plugged connection and it's not, you know, acting as two different networks, you should be good to go um, just to connect. If for some reason um, it's not doing that, you may have to VPN going this way or you go back to, you know, a, a jack on the wall and plug your computer in directly into that network. So you're still able to go back in and get that um, loading page of that peripheral for the device that you just reassigned. All right, that should be everything that you need to do to get your system unlocked and up and running again. Hope it works and good luck.